This is the 2024 Rocky Mountain Flow. And if that name sounds familiar to you, you're for one, correct, and for two, probably over the age of 30. The Flow existed in Rocky's lineup from 2005 to 2014, but the Flow is back and promises to be better than ever. But there's one thing I couldn't help but notice, and that's in that all of Rocky Mountain's branding for this bike, you never once see the word dirt jumper. Instead, they market the Flow as a pump track bike but that didn't stop us from taking it to the dirt jumps and skate park as well. And in this video, we'll take a look at how the flow fared as well as compare it to the rest of the dirt jump or should I say pump track market. The first thing I did upon receiving the flow was reach out to Rocky Mountain to see if the pump track designation was simply a marketing choice or if it was more inherent to the bike's characteristic, say the difference between a BMX race and a freestyle bike. And turns out the answer is a little bit of both. For starters, the bike is pretty light. My size extra large came in at just 25.6 pounds or 11.6 kilograms without pedals. That said, Rocky Mountain still claims that the bike far exceeds industry strength standards. And I can personally attest to that given that I did just about the biggest nose case I've done in quite a while on this bike. In terms of geometry, the bike definitely leans more towards the fast and stable side of the spectrum. The 455 millimeter reach is the longest I've seen in a dirt jumper, and the 316 millimeter bottom bracket height is about as low as they come as well. The 465 millimeter stack felt a bit low in comparison to the frame's long reach, which again speaks to the bike's racier intentions. Collectively, these numbers make for a bike that is extremely stable at high speeds, albeit maybe not quite as maneuverable or agile as a bike designed for the skate park or dirt jumps. Now, in addition to the size XL that I have here, Rocky Mountain also makes a 26 inch small slash medium, as well as two youth bikes featuring 24 and 20 inch wheels. Both adult bikes have adjustable chainstay length with built in tensioners that can be adjusted from 380 to 410 millimeters to further fine tune your ride. Both bikes also have a 68.5 degree head tube angle, which is right in line with most modern dirt jumpers. The Rocky Mountain Flow lists for $1,259, which is on the low end compared to most dirt jumpers, but you still get some pretty decent components. At the front of the bike is a 100 millimeter Manitou Circus Expert fork, which features an air spring with rebound and compression adjustment. The seven clicks of compression provided a wide range of adjustment and I left it open at the dirt jumps, a couple clicks in at the pump track and fully locked out while at the skate park. The Circus fork does have disc brake mounts, but the Flow comes with just a rear brake, more specifically the Tektro HD M275. A big part spec highlight for me were the 2.3 inch Max's DTH tires, which are legendary in the BMX and dirt jump world. They were fast rolling and surprisingly grippy, even on the wet, freshly shoveled concrete at the skate park. These were wrapped around a pair of aluminum Rocky Mountain wheels with a 30 millimeter internal width. And the rest of the components on this bike were largely covered by Rocky Mountain as well, including the pivotal seat, 40 millimeter stem, and 780 millimeter wide bars. So with the boring stuff out of the way, let's get on and talk about how the Rocky Mountain feels to ride, starting on its home turf, the pump track. My BMX racing days are long behind me, and to be honest, that was about the last time I spent any time pumping in circles. Despite my own ignorance, however, the flow handled itself just fine at the pump track. I was impressed with just how much grip I could get out of the tires, and the long frame geometry never felt like too much while carving tight corners and manualing through the rollers. All in all, the Rocky Mountain Flow left nothing to be desired at the pump track, and I suspect it would be the same racing BMX on it, though sadly I never got a chance to do that while I had the bike. Next, it was time to head to some terrain that I'm a little more familiar with, the dirt jumps. I managed to squeeze in just one session at my local spot before the snow began to fall, and I was, for the most part, impressed with how the flow did there. Once again, the geometry felt comfortable and confidence inspiring while hitting high speed doubles. Though I would probably swap out the 38 mil rise bars for something with a bit more rise. I mentioned at the start of the video that the flow helped me unlock a line I had yet to ride on either my BMX or trail bike, which I think speaks to the perfect balanced dirt jumper strike between those two disciplines. But it was while working on this line that I discovered what might be one of the bike's few weaknesses, and that was the braking performance. The Tektro HD M275s had virtually zero modulation, I have ridden those brakes before without experiencing the same modulation and control issues, so hopefully it's just a one-off thing, but it did make dialing in my speed just a bit trickier. Another slightly disconcerting trait that I found while at the dirt jumps was the headset's tendency to loosen, requiring me to re-tighten that top cap every half hour or so. Now, again, I am on the bigger side and was hitting some decent sized doubles, but nothing that I think should be out of the range of expectation for a dirt jumper like the Flow. I'm hoping that this is once again just a one-off issue, and I'm thankful to say that it never happened at the pump track or at my final testing location, the skate park. 
I've always loved spending time at the skate park, even when it means shoveling off a bunch of snow and ice like it did when I took the flow. Sadly, this made my options a bit limited, especially in regards to riding bigger bowls, but I still had a blast playing around on the smaller plaza features I had cleared. Going into testing, I assumed that the bike's longer wheelbase would prove detrimental when playing around with techier jibs and tricks, but I was wrong. I was also appreciative of the Manitou Circus's wide range of compression adjustment and chose to add all seven clicks of dampening, effectively locking out the fork. Overall, I was very impressed with how the flow handled itself at the dirt jumps, proving once and for all to be much more than just a dedicated pump track bike. Now though, it's time to see how the Rocky Mountain Flow compares against other bikes on the market. Starting with the Marin Alcatraz, which at $1,399 is $140 more than the Rocky Mountain. Both bikes feature the same 100mm Manitou Circus Expert fork and are pretty similar in terms of the rest of the part spec as well. But where they differ is in geometry. The size large Alcatraz has a shorter reach and higher stack than the Flow, giving it a more upright position, better for leveraging the bike into bunny hops and manuals as well as doing tricks. The Marin also has a steeper head tube angle and reduced bottom bracket drop, once again bolstering the bike's maneuverability but at the cost of additional stability at higher speeds. With that in mind, the Alcatraz is probably going to be a better option for riders who are looking to progress their skills at the skate park or dirt jumps, whereas the Rocky Mountain Flow, just like Rocky claims, is going to be the better option for fast times at the pump or BMX racetrack. The next comparison I want to make might seem a bit bizarre because I want to compare this to a BMX bike, or more specifically, the Haro Pro 24, which lists for just $679. Now, I've mentioned already in this video that I'm a bit of a BMX aficionado, and so, sure, I might be a little biased, but I can't help but think that a BMX bike is going to be more fun and definitely more affordable for a lot of people. Not only that, but BMX race bikes like this Haro are the undisputed champs in pump track and BMX racing. So if you're planning to spend the majority of your time there anyway, why not get a purpose-built tool? But if you plan to venture much beyond the pump track to the dirt jumps or even a dual slalom course, then I think you will appreciate having the bigger wheels and suspension fork that you'd get on a bike like the Flow. The larger frame geometry of the Flow over the 24-inch BMX bike will also appeal to riders who struggle with lower back pain or maybe are just wanting a bike that's going to feel a little bit more like their mountain bike. So who's the bike for? Well, between the bike's long frame proportions and relatively low price, I think it's a perfect option for adult mountain bikers who are looking to get a second or maybe third bike to spend some time at the pump track, be it honing in their skills or just hanging out with their kids. And to be honest, I kind of fit this category. And despite already having a BMX bike, I was very impressed by the flow. So much so that it's left me seriously considering buying it from Rocky instead of having to send it away for good. If you have any more questions about the Rocky Mountain Flow or dirt jumpers in general, you can leave those down in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. While you're there, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a second to like this video and subscribe to the 99 Spokes YouTube channel. And lastly, remember that bikes are for everyone. Have fun out there.